What up, what up, bro? It's your boy, PNT and I'm the... PNT and I'm the... Hold on, drop that tag for the people so they know who I am. PNT and I'm the cameraman. Yes, indeed, it's your boy, PNT and the cameraman, Mr. Shoot You Up Like the Taliban. And for all bookings, promotions, and all other inquiries, hit that link in the description. Get at me on LLV. 10kmedia.com Alright, and today I'm going to kick it with y'all With the people about sports Let's talk about the NBA And some of the guys who I believe Should be most improved Player of the year 2018 has been a crazy year In the East It's looking a lot better Than it has over a couple years So one time, one time Can we get a clap it up, clap it up for the Eastern Conference because them boys, they might not be stars, but they are professional NBA players and they're going out and they're working their ass off. I don't think an Eastern Conference team will win the championship, but you know, these guys are working hard. So shout out to them boys. But let's get back to it and get back moving to the topic at hand and who is the man with the plan and the man is... The guy who's going to be the most improved player of the year. I'm going to give you my top five. And I want you guys to get in the comments. And let me know who you think wins. Or did I pick, leave anybody off this list? Or did I put someone on this list that I that didn't deserve it? Are we going to start off in Brooklyn? Okay, what's up my Brooklyn natives? Who are Brooklyn at? Who are Brooklyn at? We going to do this for the culture. This hip hop, baby. And sports and politics. But we talking about... Spencer Dinwiddie right now. Spencer Dinwiddie, he's averaging right now 13.4 PPG, 6.4 assists per game, and 3.3 rebounds. Compared to his career averages of 8.3 points a game, 4 assists, and 2 rebounds. Nah, that doesn't seem like a drastic, drastic improvement. Only a couple of points. You know, better assists. I mean, he got better across the board, so we gonna clap it up for that. Exactly. Indeed, because a lot of the NBA players in the defensive Dinwiddie position are out the NBA. They're in the Did League or they're overseas. So, you know, that boy worked hard to be able to get on a team. And he was just lucky enough. And we, know, we never like to say lucky when a guy gets hurt. But he was just ready to have the opportunity to come out and play. D'Angelo Russell went down. He stepped up. He's doing his thing. Brooklyn is playing a lot better than expected with the backup point guard starting. And if you look at their roster, they have, you know, role players. Alan Crabb, uh, Jay Crowder. No, I said Jay Crowder. These guys look good the same. Damari Carroll. I'm sorry, um, but those guys are very similar looking. Yeah, these guys are just all role players. It's only a couple of guys who, are project who were projected to be stars coming out the draft, and that's Russell. And who they recently traded for in Okafor. And I want to see how that tandem plays out. Will they trade one of these guys? Will they develop them together? Will they become a dominant force? A nice one-two punch in the Eastern Conference. But yeah, he's really improved. And I think he should be in consideration for the top three most improved players of the year. If he doesn't win. Because his impact on the team is where, where it's not the numbers, the numbers don't pop off the page, it's just the impact on the team that this young brother is creating is something else. We haven't seen a lot of guys do this. Okay, the next guy on my list is Victor Oladipo. Okay, see, he was already the man in Indiana. He are, He's already a Hoosier, so I expected him to go over there and, and, and play good. He was expected to be good coming into the NBA. High draft pick. He's been averaging about 16.9, so 17 points a game. About 3.7 assists, so four, 4 assists a game and 4.5 rebounds. And that's for his career. Now this year, his first year selected as an All-Star. Come on, let's give him a round of applause because, you know, everyone doesn't get to make the All-Star game. And really kind of just trade the spots with Paul George in all sense of it. The spot in the All-Star game, 
the leading scorer in the lead in Indiana, and he may be doing a better job, but overall, they're still in the same area, six through eighth spot. So, how much better did they really get? But this year, his numbers are gaudy. 24.1 points a game. He's at, at 17 points a game for his career, we knew he could score. Four assists even. So he went up a, a, a third point three of an assist. So he's basically, you know, the ball, his ball movement skills, he's a shooting guard. He's, he's pretty much doing a shooting guard's job, getting four to five assists a game. Well, he's only getting four, but what do you expect out of a shooting guard? He's supposed to score. He's a, a scoring guard. And five rebounds a game. He's been, you know, he doesn't got hustle Westbrook on this team, snatching all the boards. So his boards went up. But yeah, first time All Star, first time averaging over 20 points a game. He's definitely the front runner, the guy that is most likely to get the award because he has a lot more media coverage than some of these other guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, who even though Brooklyn is a historically larger market, being in New York. You know they're a, a kind of a smaller market team because after they left New York and went to New Jersey, the market diminished. But the Knicks being the powerhouse of New York, even though they're don't Knicks. I'm not gonna get started on the Knicks. But let's get into this next guy, guy number three in my top five, and this is no Pacific order, by the way. But guy number three in my top five, I'm gonna go with Jalen Brown. It's his second year, and he probably won't get it just because most people are expecting to improve in their second year. In the improvement, it really wasn't that dramatic, but it is very noticeable. I believe it just comes from having a passing point guard. He, with Isaiah Thomas, he's a score first point guard. He's a small guy that 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 with a chip on with a big chip on his shoulder, and he loves to show you that. Even though he's 5'9", he can put up 40 to 60 points at any time. So, with a guy like that on your team in your rookie year not feeding you, you, you were likely to average what he averaged, and that was 9 points a game, 9.3 points. He had one, one assist and 3.8 rebounds, which is not terrible for a rookie. In his sophomore campaign, he came back, and what got him on this list, what got him on my list, 14 points a game, so that's a massive improvement in points. 1.5 assists, so the assists pretty much stayed the same. He's not the primary ball handler. He, that's not his his job or his role on the team. He needs to score and defend and grab rebounds, in which he's, he's improved in scoring, and his rebounds have improved as well. He went from 3.8 rebounds to 5.6 rebounds, so it's he's very, he's very much improved. Another second year player we're gonna um, talk about, Brandon Ingram. And of course, you know, he was a, he came in a little frail. He, he wasn't, really didn't have the NBA body. 19 years old, he's 20 now, and he still got a lot of growing to do with this guy. Imagine if he went to school a little longer like Kuzma. Look, Kuzma is the best player on his team, the Los Angeles Lakers four-year college player out of these all these young guys and he's exceptional he's playing so well that i kind of wish that in that contavious caldwell hope exchange where we kind of let him walk away for nothing we could have got that brooklyn pick in a sign and trade situation slip kuzma over to the pistons you know he's from flint michigan so you know it Grew up a Pistons fan on, on record saying his favorite player was Richard Hamilton. But this is not about Kyle Kuzma. This is about Brandon Ingram. And let's go over the numbers why he got on my radar to be the most improved, one of the most improved players of this NBA season. Well, he started out 11.5 um, points, 2.5 assists, and 4.5 rebounds. Now let's look at the Lonzo Ball effect. It's kind of like the Jalen Brown effect with Kyrie. You get a better point guard, you're getting fed, your points are going up, and his points went up. 15.5 points a game, and his assists went up. You know, you have a couple of veterans that are not playing, so you get to get the ball a little more, you get to pass it around and do your 
thing. So you got 3.4 assists and 5.3 rebounds. Those are pretty decent numbers. I don't think he'll get the award in the end. I think Victor Oladipo is the front runner because he's the most seen guy on ESPN, the most talked about, the most controversial guy because the way he was moved in the offseason because where he played in Oklahoma City and because who he was traded for in Paul George, who is a legitimate superstar or at least an all-star. You know, there's a thin line between superstar and all-star. Like, Boogie Cousins, he's an all-star that's supposed to be a superstar, in my opinion. Superstar, that superstar title comes with winning. You haven't been on a winning team, Boogie, but it's not about him either. It's about my most improved players of the year. And we're going to round it out with a player who didn't have a lot of, another player who didn't have a lot of opportunity. If you're looking at these guys on this list, like Spencer Denwood and Brandon Ingram, uh, Jalen Brown, I feel like he had all the opportunity in the world coming in. Um, you know, even though he had to play behind um, Avery Bradley and Jay Crowder, he still had a lot of opportunity coming in. I feel like Victor Oladipo, he he started his first year. He was almost rookie of the year. It, I think he should have been co-rookie of the year with Michael Carter Williams. Obviously, that that's just my opinion. But we're going to move down to a guy who, who didn't have as much opportunity as some of these guys who may have had the same amount of opportunity as the first guy we mentioned on the list, Spencer Dinwiddie, and that's Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn is averaging 13.7 points a game, 6.4 assists, and 4.6 rebounds. Career For his career, he only averaged 7.1 points, 3.7 assists, 3.0 rebounds even three rebounds and when you look at that i just say he was playing in minnesota playing behind ricky rubio uh zach levine they really didn't have it all together he was just he was a talented guy on the roster that didn't get enough playing scott when he he was traded to chicago chicago is a struggling team you know a lot of guys have the opportunity to look a lot better than they are. Not saying that Chris Dunn is not talented. But this kid is talented. I think he may be an all-star one day. Long kid, great defensively, can score the ball, put it in the basket. He just has to get that consistency and grow as an NBA player. Yeah, well that's that, that's about the size of it. And that's that's the list of my most improved players for the 2018 NBA season. We got Spencer Dimwitty. Victor Oladipo, Jalen Brown, Brandon Ingram, and Chris Dunn. And make sure you like, subscribe, get in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And make sure y'all visit my website, lov10kmedia.com. Oh, yeah. I got a link in the description for all these players' jerseys and apparel. God bless. And good night.